Tour 1, practice paper 1, question number 11. Now this is the last question on this paper. Sometimes there'll be 11 questions, sometimes maybe only 9 questions on the paper. It just depends. So this one's got 11 questions and here it is, the last question. A curve is given by this equation. It passes through a point P and the point P has an X coordinate of 1. Find the equation of the tangent at the point P. So let's think about this. This is the equation of the curve. So if I want the equation of the tangent to a point on that curve, the first thing I need to do is to differentiate this equation because that gives me the gradient anywhere on that curve. Differentiating the equation of the graph gives me the gradient anywhere on that graph. So let's differentiate this. There's a 1 in front there. 3 times 1. Drop that by 1 power. 2 times 2. Drop that by 1 power. So a little 1 there which we need not bother to write. Differentiate 4x and the x disappears. We're left with the 4. Differentiate the minus 5 and the minus 5 disappears. Strictly speaking, that's not what happens, but that's the way we tend to do it when we get a bit further, just so we can write the answer down. So, this is the gradient on the curve. You should write a few words down for the examiner now and again to explain to him what you're doing. So if things go wrong, you can still get some marks. So the gradient of the tangent at P when x equals 1 is, stick a 1 in there. So you get 3 times 1 squared minus 4 times 1 plus 4. So in other words, that's the gradient of the tangent, which we call one. Uh, sorry, call m. So, what about the equation? The equation of the tangent at p is a straight line, so it's y equals mx plus c, because that's the equation of any straight line. But we now know that this particular straight line, this particular tangent at P, has got a gradient of 3, so I can then go one step further. I'm going to say it again. You should write a few words down as you go through some of these questions just to show the examiner what you're thinking and how you're working it out, rather than just presenting the examiner with a mass of numbers. But we need to work out the value of C. And C is where the graph this straight line cuts through the x-axis. Now one way of doing that is to substitute a coordinate into this. But we haven't got a coordinate. We've only got the x part of the coordinate. So we need to know we need to know the coordinate coordinates at p. So this is telling sound of what I'm thinking, what I'm doing. So when x equals 1, y equals, if you substitute 1 into the original equation, you'll find the y coordinate that goes with the x equals 1. So let's substitute that 1 into there. So you've got 1 cubed minus 2 1 squared plus 4 1s minus 5. I quite appreciate you could do this in your head showing you working out. So we've now got a coordinate. We know that this tangent passes through this point. x is 1, y is minus 2. So let's substitute that into... How am I going to tell the examiner what I'm doing? Oh, I know. I'll just label that 1. How about that for showing the examiner what I'm doing? x is 1, y is minus 2, so we've got minus 2 equals 3 1's plus c, and that gives us the value of c as minus 5. 
So we now know all about it. We now know that the equation of the tangent at P is Y equals, we found out what M is, MX, and we found out what C is. I cannot overemphasize the need to show working out, including writing a few words along the way that explains to the examiner what you're thinking and what you're doing. If you get it all right, then you could possibly get the six marks or seven marks that's for this question. You could possibly get them all if you get it right, with the right mess. Because you can only get it right by going through a correct process. But if you don't get it right, and the examiner can't see what on earth you've done, you'll get naught. There is more than one way of doing this question. You could certainly do this other ways. But if you did it like this, then let's say you get a mark for each part of the differentiation there. A mark for appreciating that the gradient of the tangent is going to be 3. Um, then one mark for putting that into an equation. Then a mark for working out the coordinate that is required. Then a mark for working out the value. See? And then as I say, a mark for the answer based on what you've done. So you could actually get the mark for the answer even though you've gone wrong. Hmm. Show you working out. So that's the end of this paper. And if you do want to see the whole of the solutions to this paper and have a copy of this paper yourself as well to work through it, along with paper 2 and paper 3, then visit www.mathtutor.biz and look at all the details on the website. I do hope I will hear from you. Good luck in your exams anyway.